Hi, my name is Lynn Schmidt and I am the author of a, the book, The Art of Mixing Textiles and Quilt, recently out with CNT this July. And I would like to give you a brief overall on one of the projects. Uh, that would be Echoes in Italy, Echoes of Italy. It was a project that we recently did uh, and were inspired by what we saw in the uh, atmosphere and the, the countryside of Italy. People often ask me, where does your inspiration come from? And the easiest way I could think to share that with you was to bring this image of some of the photographs which I took while I was in Orvieto. I am fortunate enough to teach there three times now, going back for my fourth, and i um, excited to share with you some of the evolution. Sometimes you start your palettes with a, a fabric, sometimes you start it with a concept, sometimes you start it with an image that is uh, something you've seen, something you've experienced. In this case, in Echoes of Italy, it was the countryside. These are images that were from the market and the architecture and the general Tuscan golden feel that you get in the countryside itself. We developed this palette, as you can see it expressed, and most of our projects, as you find them in the book, there are 14 projects in the book. Most of them are very scrappy. They deal with eclectic textiles. Certainly their base is cotton. We deal with the cotton as, as the go-to, but they affectionately refer to me as the quilt heretic in that I, diver I digress from the uh, normal cotton palette into many other alternative fabrics. So let me share that with you and you can get a brief idea of how you might develop your own palettes as you approach any scrappy project, whether it's in the book or someone else's. Um, when we looked at this particular palette, what was I most inspired by was certainly the golds, the greens, the um, eggplant colors that were prevalent and you can see that here again as you look at the color palette itself. Certainly the first place we go is cotton. The genres, however, do not have to be limited to an individual line. In this particular fabric range, you can see that there are reproduction prints, there are novelty prints. This is actually one that was developed to be in a cowboy quilt, and obviously not necessarily something elevated as a, a um, Tuscan quilt, but it ended up being the appropriate color and the texture. Certainly we look at boutique, um, batiks and as there's some novelty prints from various designers, I don't stay in any one line. And why can't Kate play with Joe Morton? I don't see any reason why not. So you start there and you start developing the alternatives and the textures and the depths of your colors. But then you begin to digress. The easiest thing to do is to first introduce alternative cottons. And in that case, you'll see the, those down here. This is an outstanding twill that is actually a Japanese fabric, and I encourage you to consider anything that might be out of the otherwise considered norm. In this case, also consider alternative scales. As you look at the reproduction prints, they're relatively small in scale and tend to fall back into the background, but a large scale can be just as interesting. Consider woven fabrics that have a more or less iridescent quality because there's a warp and a weft to them as to the nature and how they're woven. Wovens, in particular, give you a lot of texture back, and even col columnkari prints, I'm sorry, I always want to call them columnari prints, and of course that's not appropriate. Uh, columnkari prints, which are an ancient um, method of wood cutting in India, and then they are hand painted. Consider them, they are in the marketplace, you just have to look for them a little bit more. Now wools, I think you start to, to digress a little bit and you start to get into the more eclectic textiles. In the book, there are a series of techniques that teach you how to deal with these different kinds of textiles. Wool has some very specific directions in it that, in that as you feed it through your machine, you're going to put it on the bed of your machine and your cotton fabrics or whatever you're pairing them with on top because the, the teeth, your feed dogs of the machine actually um, help you and, not, and you avoid the stretch in the fabric. So consider wool, not just as, as an addition element or a applique element, but as a textural element. There are various grades of wool. You can deal with uh, flannels, you can deal with meltons, and of course there are different textures of the wools themselves in terms of how they are woven. Small scale prints, large scale prints, whether they're felted or unfelted, still are appropriate to be putting into the body of your quilts, believe it or not. Certainly you can consider wool as a component of your quilts. Um, you can put them into the interior and the body of your quilt as easily as you can apply them to the borders and some of the feature elements within it. Consider wool applique, which is what we did in Echoes of Italy, expressing the architectural details that we saw in the floors of the, um, 
the cathedral where this one was taken from. Wool applique gives you the opportunity to get a very set high saturated um, hand dyed wool color and these colorations certainly work with it. Now at this point you've got a fairly traditional palette even though you started to stretch the envelope. But let's go one step further and consider going out to yet a few more textiles that would, might be interesting in your palette. My favorites tend to be the silks and the silks are quite diverse. Silks are often, a, this is a silk and cotton blend which is um, called silk radiance. This particular one is a woven silk and it in itself gives you both the color and the um, saturation, but as well as the texture. This is a textured silk maca. Silk maca means nothing more than raw silk. And it's a question of how heavy is the slubbing in the fabric. This particular one was used in, as the background on this project. In the silk maca, which is a, a flat weave, you get a matte shine to it. But never can you, can you slight the dupioni silks. The dupioni silks have this beautiful radiance that you can't get in any other fabric. And if nothing else, consider using those. The key word to that, interfacing. You have to use interfacing, in my opinion. And how you might ask how we'd know these things? Well, I made the mistake, so you didn't have to. Interfacing prevents the inevitable pulling apart of the seams. You don't want to go through a whole construction of a project, and then ultimately, in its use, find that it's fraying out on the seams. A little bit late to have that problem. So always interface it. The instructions, again, are in the book, and they give you a pretty good primer on how to work with an awful lot of this. So interfacing on Silk Dupioni, and obviously the colors are rich and deep and have a certain sheen to them. And never slight the fact that home deck can be used in your quilts. When I use the term home deck, it's a rather broad scope term. And in this case, this is the particular fabric that was used in the borders of the quilt project. It's also used in the interior, and you would say to me, well, Lynn, that's really heavy, it's really thick, how is that going to work in the piecing? Well, it's right there. It's in the quilt, it can be done. These are two and a, two, two inch finished squares. And it can be done with a little bit of manipulation, it's not a problem. You have all the opportunities to get subtle variances and, and small bits of many things in your project. So, in closing, what I would encourage you to do is consider using the entire box of crayons. Don't be limited just by what's just available in the cotton uh, industry. And consider taking the guidelines that are in the book and applying them into your projects. Thank you for coming today. My name is Lynn Schmidt, and my book is The Art of Mixing Textiles and Quilts by CNT Publishing.